Starting out today, with the LASCOC2 filter, showing the solar flares, that occurred on the 26th and the 27th. Up next, the flares are observed using the ink filter. Looks to be a partial halo solar flare on the 26th as well as the 27th, you will be seeing that, on the difference filters, in the next clip. Here on the difference filters, you will see some distortion right as, the halo solar flare, erupts. Let's take another look at that, and I'll pause the clip in two frames. This has been reported by the spaceweather.com website, as a halo solar flare. Here are the flares seen on the latest LASCOC3 filter as of today. Using this CME model, the solar flares are mapped, the Parker SP and the Stereo A satellites along with Earth will receive a double dose of radiation, the 29th and 30th. Going by the color coding on this model, it has a bit of stronger energy than the last flare, from the 24th. Shown on the solar flare classification chart, there has been 8 C class flares in the last three days. In the last two hours there has been 2 C class flares. The last one was AC, class 7.39. This HMI intensity gram chart, shows that there are four sunspot regions, on the Earth-facing side of the Sun. This, K, index, and by extension the planetary K, index, are used to characterize the magnitude of geomagnetic storms. KP is an excellent indicator of disturbances in the Earth's magnetic field and is used by SWPC to decide whether geomagnetic alerts and warnings need to be issued for users who are affected by these disturbances. The principal users affected by geomagnetic storms are the electrical power grid, spacecraft operations, users of radio signals that reflect off of or pass through the ionosphere, and observers of the aurora. Today there was three KPs that reached the value of four today. This is the position of the planets today. And as always, sit back, relax, and let me keep my eye on the sun for you.